Hello and uh, welcome back to Frosty's OP. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is uh, looking at a document, a press release that was uh, released by NASA uh, on the 16th of May and you see I've made my notes, I've been very very busy and uh, this uh, uh, press release was called uh, NASA Taps 11 Companies to Advance Human Lunar Landers. Uh, strange choice of vocabulary, TAPS. Uh, NASA are trying to get in with the kids, I think. Uh, but anyway, what this uh, document is about is clearly it announces 11 companies which uh, NASA want to involve in the development of lunar landers for their plans to get to the moon for 2024. Now, um, the thing that's interesting with this is that it's a very, very short period. It's only going to cover six months, and in that time, uh, these companies are going to have to develop various parts. Um, they, first of all, they're going to have to do a study, and then from that study, develop prototypes. Uh, based on it being six months, uh, I really can't see them being anything other than computer simulations for these prototypes. Uh, they're not going to be able to build mock-ups, especially multiple mock-ups in six months. It's just going to be too short a period. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that's interesting with this is they've allocated $45 million dollars but some of the, com the companies will have to put 20% of whatever NASA gives to them towards these uh, studies and these prototypes, the companies will have to put 20% themselves. Now, for the big companies, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, for the smaller companies that are actually in these uh, 11, it may be, and also it's going to potentially tap into their resources in terms of human skills, and uh, that may cause problems for them as well. Okay, so first up, we have uh, Lockheed Martin. And uh, Lockheed Martin, if you remember from, if you've watched my previous video, you'll see that I've talked about the lunar lander that they're looking to develop. The idea behind it is they're going to take the Orion technology and apply it to a lunar lander. Now Lockheed Martin, which by the way I'm getting the name right this time, not Martin Lockheed. Somewhere in my subconscious I think I've got the, the idea of this chap called Martin building space hardware in the shed in his back garden. It just seems to appeal to me. So anyway, Lockheed Martin. Uh, they're involved in all aspects. Now, what is all aspects involved? Well, NASA want uh, development uh, studies and prototypes for transfer, ascent, descent, and refuel. Now, what this entails is that the Lunar Gateway will be in its moon orbit, and the uh, vehicle that is going to be developed will be attached to the Lunar Gateway with the transfer vehicle. So the transfer vehicle will take the ascent, descent portion down to low moon orbit and from there the, mod the module will then land and then it will come back up, reconnect to the transfer vehicle which will then take it back to the lunar gateway and in the hope to uh, make this whole uh, concept reusable they have a refuel study as well so that they can refuel the transfer vehicle and the ascent descent vehicles on the lunar gateway so that they can just do it over and over again and then obviously the Orion is the method in which to get to the Lunar Gateway. So Lockheed Martin are involved in all of this and uh, they're doing the, obviously the descent studies, transfer and the refuel. Uh, one of the interesting things with this document by the way is that uh, there's no mention of an ascent study or ascent prototypes. Uh, so one must assume that if you're doing the descent you're going to be doing the ascent study and prototypes as well. I and mean, if you're going down you've got to get it back, right? Well, one would hope so. So Lockheed Martin are involved with everything. Uh, clearly that makes sense. You know, they, they have a long established relationship. Uh, on top of that, you know, they're building the, the Orion capsule. Um, next up we have Boeing. Boeing are doing the Starliner capsule, uh, which is a crewed capsule. So it makes complete sense they're involved. And they're doing, once again, they're involved in everything. So they're going to be do a descent study, two descent prototypes, transfer study, transfer prototypes, refuel study, and refueling prototypes. Um, Boeing, obviously, not just the Starliner, they're also involved in building the SLS main core, and uh, so it makes complete sense for them to be involved at this stage, and they are part of my four usual suspects. The third one up is Northrop Grumman. Obviously, Northrop Grumman are, have their Cygnus capsule, which is the uh, resupply capsule for the ISS. Uh, that, so Northrop Grumman, along with SpaceX, uh, are doing all the resupply missions to the ISS at the moment. So they're involved in the descent and in the refuel prototypes. And um, one would expect them to, uh, to be at the, sort of the top of the list for whatever they come up with. Last of the four usual suspects is Aerojet Rocketdyne. 
Now Aerojet, Rocketdyne um, are going to just be involved in the transfer study. Uh, they're really the engine guys, you know, they've been the engine guys for space exploration since year dot. You know, they do, they've got the RS-25 engine which is used on the Space Shuttle which is now going to be used on the SLS for its main core. They've got the rl -Tel engine, you know, which is um, the mid-stage engine uh, which is used heavily as well by uh, not just NASA but ULA and others. Um, and on top of that they're going to be supplying engines to SNC for their Dream Chaser capsule. And uh, one of the reasons why they may potentially be involved in this transfer study is they're working in uh, sync with S um, SNC on uh, the electrical systems for a deep space habitation system. So that makes absolute complete sense. Uh, up at next as well is uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation. Uh, now they've been involved in um, a descent study and prototype, transfer and refuel. And as I just mentioned with Aerojet, uh, they're building the Dream Chaser, you know, which is their cute little kind of mini space shuttle. I mean, it's absolutely adorable. And, and it's planned to be a crew capsule in the future, but for now it's going to be a cargo capsule and it's been uh, selected to uh, resupply the ISS. Uh, so they're working on, uh, on that. Obviously they're working with Aerojet Rocketdyne as well. So hence why they've been included. Now next up we have our two commercial companies, very well known commercial companies, Blue Origin and SpaceX. Blue Origin, uh, as you know from my recent video and it's been in the news and it's been pretty much mainstream news, uh, they've got their Blue Moon Lander, uh, they've got it as a, a prototype, uh, they have a mock-up and clearly they've done uh, the simulations. Um, so it makes sense that they've been asked to do a descent study and a transfer prototype. Now SpaceX have only been asked to provide a descent study, nothing else. So, you know, kind of real blue sky stuff. And I think they, uh, NASA don't really believe that, that uh, SpaceX are going to be interested in that. Uh, SpaceX are pretty busy, you know, they've got lots on. Uh, and uh, I can't see them willing to, to allocate the resources to that, which is probably why NASA just went, yeah, we're going to include you, here's a descent study, so you know you're not excluded, but we know you're not going to really get, get involved with this. Okay, so those are all kind of um, the kind of obvious ones. And then we have the last four. Now, these last four are kind of like the wild cards. Sorry, my book keeps flipping over from the wind. Now, we have uh, Dynetics. Now, Dynetics have been asked to do uh, a descent study, uh, but also five descent prototypes, which is a lot of prototypes. Um, now, why would that be? Now, their involvement with NASA is they build the, the USA which is the universal stage adapter. And it's the bit on the SLS that joins the fat bit to the skinny bit. And it provides all the electrical, structural, and communication links between the main core of the SLS and the upper stages. Now, that's obviously their link with NASA, but their speciality is actually in design, development, testing, and construction for the US military. And so they have a track record of you know, getting stuff out the door from scratch to an end product, so it makes sense that they'll be asked to uh, develop lots of different prototypes. Uh, next up, SSL. Now, SSL have just been asked to do a ref refuel study and a refuel prototype. Now, SSL may not be called SSL for long. Uh, they've been acquired by Maxar and now a complete subsidiary of Maxar. And, uh, but their involvement uh, is that they are a satellite specialist. And normally what they do and what they specialize in is they provide uh, essentially a satellite chassis for customers, you know, which is all the, the gubbings that you need for a satellite, and then the customer can squish in whatever you know, uh, products they have that need to be in space inside this kind of satellite chassis, and uh, SSL can then get it up into space and get it operational for them. Now, that's the first stage, so why would they involve, be involved with the refuel? Well, they're also uh, involved on a NASA project called Restore-L. And what Restore-L is, is a project to build a satellite, which is essentially a satellite robot, that's going to hook onto the Landsat 7 geological satellite and refuel it. So they are essentially working on this very, very concept uh, with NASA already. So for them to uh, get involved in a refueling prototype makes absolute and complete sense. Okay, next up we have um, Maston Space Systems. Now, Maston Space Systems, um, what's interesting with these guys is that you'll see from the document that they've not been asked to do a study, they're going straight to the descent prototype. Now, why, why is that? Well, first up, uh, they were selected for the um, NASA Catalyst program in 2014, 
which kind of migrated into something called CLPS, which is the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program. And the idea is, is to get uh, lunar payloads up to the lunar surface. And uh, as I said, Mastin have been selected for that, and they've already done lots and lots of work, and they have something called the XL-1, which is a lunar lander um, for cargo, and it's already in its final design. So uh, there was obviously clearly no need for a study. Uh, they could go straight to the descent prototype because they've been working with it, uh, with it, with NASA on it for quite a while. Uh, on top of that, they're also looking to build uh, something called Zeus, uh, and Zeus uh, is going to be a large lunar lander, and they're partnering with the ULA on this, and they're hoping to be able to land uh, up for five tons on a reusable uh, Zeus and ten tons on a one-time uh, landing. So that that's big payload. So. Um, it's uh, no surprise that NASA want Maston uh, involved in this project as well. And then we have the final one. And I have to say, this one has me very, very confused. The last one is Orbit Beyond. Now, Orbit Beyond is a consortium. And it's a consortium uh, whose uh, main goal is to provide cislunar solutions. Now, cislunar means anything that's happening between Earth orbit and the moon. Anything in space between there, that's cislunar. So they want to be involved uh, in this and they've been selected. And once again, no study, they're going straight to the two refueling prototypes. And what I find strange is that um, they literally just got selected to be involved in the same program as Maston, CLPS, um, only in November 2018. And if you look at their website, you know, there's very, very little there that, that gives any indication that they have anything concrete. You know, they, uh, they, they are a consortium that involves four completely different companies. I mean, they have Team Indus, uh, which is involved in the lander engineering, and that is an Indian company, and uh, they got their technology from uh, their involvement in the Google Lunar Prize. Um, sorry, the Lunar X Prize, to be exact. Uh, so they obviously have a track record, you know, they've done their development, so that makes sense, you know, having Team Indus there. Uh, they have a company called Honeybee Robotics, which is going to be involved in payload integration. So we're assuming that's going to be arms and stuff, and, you know, the, the, the stuff that's going to hang on to the sides of the lunar lander. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> uh, and then we have um, Advanced Space. Now, Advanced Space, uh, you know, they've been kicking around. And their, their goal is very much mission management. You know, they're involved, uh, in fact, they're involved in trying to create a GPS system around the moon. And uh, they do all the, spe the mission control stuff. You know, that's their specialty, and they've been doing it for the military for a long while, and for commercial use as well. And then they have Ceres Robotics, which is going to be involved in, in surface operations. And I could find very little about this company. You know, they've done one tweet, that's it. You know, so, they're not the most talkative of companies, and I really don't know quite what they're going to do. And finally, uh, there's Apollo Fusion, which is very vague. They're going to be involved in future programs. So what that entails, who knows? Uh, now, apparently, looking at their website, they're going to have a spacecraft ready to fly to the moon by 2020. And this is all the information we have on it. So, a bit sketchy, you know. Call me a skeptic, but uh, there's not much there to go on. And then they've got their next gen lander, uh, you know, which is on, also mentioned on their website. And uh, if you look at the icon, does it? I mean, I don't know about you, but that looks like an Apollo 11 lander to me. But hey, <laughs> maybe, maybe they've got a retro look going on. I don't know. So I, I'm being a bit mean, but it, it's just too vague. And you know, just off this one document, this one press release. You know, they kind of seem to be involved with this without much of a track record. I mean, obviously, you know, they've got this guy called Jeff Patton, who I have to look up his uh, former title at ULA because uh, it's quite a long one. Uh, Development Program Systems Engineering and Integration Manager. Yeah, fit that on a name badge. So he's the main guy heading up the engineering. And, you know, clearly they have NASA have confidence in this guy being able to, you know, get this uh, integration to work between these five different companies. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Orbit Beyond. Okay, so to wrap up, uh, some things that need to be given some uh, thought here is that uh, obviously uh, there's this whole 20%, you know, that the company has to supply 
um, uh, in addition to the money that uh, NASA is going to give to them towards the studies and the prototypes. Now, we've got 45 million, you know, we divide it by, by 11, you know, we're looking at about 4 million a pop, although it's not obviously going to be handed out equally, but we're just going to sort of take rough numbers for now. Uh, if you take 20% of that, that's like 800,000 bucks. You know, let's say one of the smaller companies only get half, half that amount, that's still $400,000. Now, you know, the smaller companies, you know, like Maston and you know, maybe Orbit Beyond, you know, are they going to be willing to sink in 400,000 bucks into a six-month project that may lead absolutely nowhere? Uh, but also, on the other hand, they may not have no choice about it. You know, that if you're Maston and you've got, for example, you know, you've been selected for this NASA program and you're working with them on a, on a project, you know, same with SSL, you know, they're working on Restore L. You know, you don't want to turn around to NASA and go, no, nah, we're not interested. You know, you've worked hard to build that relationship and to get those contracts. So you kind of got to go into this and, and go for it. And it's not just the money, you know, it's not just, you know, spending $400,000 on, you know, potentially what is just blue sky. It's the resources. You know, I know from experience, you know, having run my own businesses, you know, you get involved in some other project, it taps away from your core business and your ability to, you know, to generate revenue. And uh, that has potentially had even more of an impact than, than putting in this 20%. So it'll be interesting to see how, how it affects these companies, how involved they do actually get. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, hopefully I've covered pretty much you know, everything that needed to be covered. I don't want to waffle on too long. And um, I will go on more about these. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this and see where it goes. I think that's the best thing. Now, uh, to finish off, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the, this little chat. And uh, as always, I'm going to be releasing on a regular basis uh, on uh, space stuff, as well as kind of skateboarding, rollerblading, and my usual things. So, bye for now.